I want to. Um, <coughs> I'm going to open up tonight's meeting um, with some announcements. Um, we just came from executive session um, for the stated uh, purposes that are on the agenda. This meeting is being broadcast on local cable TV and recorded for rebroadcast on local cable channels and on the internet. The Historical Society Candidates Forum is this Wednesday. It will be in this room, and that's April 24th at 7.30. The Bicentennial Series of Nature Walks is going to uh, continue on April 27th and May 2nd uh, at Riverbend Trails, and April 25th and May 4th at the <coughs> Withers Conservation Area. Um, if, any, if you have any questions, um, or where these places are, because some people don't know uh, about all our trail systems in town, please call, uh, talk to the um, town manager's office and they will um, and or look on our website. Sign up is required at the Open Space Committee website. That's probably the best place to go look. Earth Day, which is today, and um, our roadside cleanup for that is this Saturday, April 27th, and Sunday, April 28th. We're going to follow the same <laughs> procedures that we generally do. Trash bags and gloves are available at the town offices and at the food mart. Special annual town meeting is Monday the 29th at 7 p.m. at the Pentucket uh, High School Auditorium. Our electronic sign Angus says that our, our Pentucket, um, excuse me, that our town meeting it is on the 27th, but it doesn't say the high school. <laughs> Could you put that on there, please? And we have signs available for anybody who wants them. No, the 29th, 29th, 29th. I have, these cheaters don't work this far. <coughs> the cheaters don't work this far away. And the 27th is just right above the 29th here on Earth Day. Okay, so annual uh, is the 29th at 7 p.m. I would suggest that everybody get there earlier. It's going to start at 7 p.m. And I would bet that you'll probably be um, waiting in line for at least 15 minutes at the least to be able to register. Um, we do have some signs that we're going to be putting out. If we can grab in the basement tonight, we can, uh, we can um, do that. That it says that the um, town meeting is on Monday. You'll see those around town. The town election is May 6th. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. We do have contested races, so I would ask everybody to vote. When are our absentee ballots already? They're already <laughs> available, and they're available um, to... Until the day Friday, before? Friday before. Okay. They must be returned by 8 p.m., right? The 6th. The Memorial Day Parade is Monday, May 27th, and it starts in the square at 8.30. Excuse me, at 10.30. Anything else? Do you have anything to add? I know, I need to... Brief comment. Before you say... You want to say it, or you want me to say it first? That's all. How about you? Oh. Well, I just wanted to say this is my last meeting, so I uh, served two terms and nine years on the Finance Committee, so I appreciate the uh, confidence in uh, people electing me. I think I made a lot of contributions that will be around for a long time, so I uh, totally enjoyed the time, and thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's what I was going to say, actually. I was going to say something about you. So there are, there is a lot of things that people do in town when you live in a small town. We all give in certain ways. And Joe gave a lot being on the Finance Committee, and he gave even more, and a lot more sacrifices being a selectman. Um, for our $1 a year. Which I decline. Which I decline <laughs> also. Um, um, it's more fulfilling. Um, I have to say that this board, um, working together, I think, has been the most productive and the most positive board that I have on my tenure as being a selectman, and I will miss Joe. It's, we have um, a good mix of personalities, a good mix of knowledge. Um, Joe's attention to detail um, was so integral and important during the town manager process that I don't honestly think that if we had another board, not that you and I couldn't have done it, Archie, that it wouldn't have gone as seamless as it did. And I appreciate what you did. I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> was that all? Was you. So 
Yep, so that's something that you can notch on your um, holster and keep that you'll be part of this town going forward and obviously it's a better part because I think we are now better that you have been a selectman and I thank you for that. Um, it's interesting when you're in these situations because I don't know, Joe and I don't travel in the same groups of people so it's interesting when you put yourselves in these situations that you meet interesting people that I probably would never have met. So I'm glad that you're a selectman. Yeah, we, you know, we agree on most things. And, uh, and we don't. I think there's healthy dis disagreement or discussion on well, occasional. And at the end of the day, we're all making the decisions for the best forward. Yep. for the town. So I thank you for your service. I thank you for your friendship. <laughs> and good wishes. And I hopefully you'll be back in some capacity soon. Um, there are a lot of openings that we can get to tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I I'm think not sure which, I don't, I'm not sure what your resume is about the chief, but I don't I don't even know if you have a gun permit, so I don't but think you're going to be qualified a, for that. I believe there's a period of time when you leave office that you cannot be appointed by the board. <coughs> mm -hmm. But five bucks the next time you go <laughs> to yes yeah. yes there is <laughs> yes there is. But I, I'll bet you I'll bet you five dollars <laughs> I'll bet you five dollars um, that the next time you go to the post office, somebody will come up to you and say. You know, Joe, can you do that for me? Or, uh, can you please look into that? And you're going to go, I'm not a selectman anymore. And you go, oh, I'm sorry. I think they did that to Dick for about three years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough gushing over Joe. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hopefully we have something we can disagree about tonight so we can get back to our regular personalities. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you have anything? Okay. I don't know about that. I mumbled over my words, but thank you. Okay, the first thing on our agenda is is going to be the presentation of the 18 audit by Tony. Thanks, Tony. We're going to, um, it's a presentation, and we're not going to take any questions on it tonight, if that's okay, and we're going to, um, if anybody has any questions, we have any questions, we're going to bring them to the managers, um, excuse me, the town manager's office. I think that's the best way to handle it. We've got a huge agenda, and it's, you know, so questions. So go through it? Yeah, is that what, you, well, yeah, I want you to do what you want to do. That's fine. Okay, thank you. So um, just wanted to start, so we're going to go through the management letter, which hopefully mm -hmm. everyone has yep. uh, in front of them. We'll just start with the overview like we normally do, which is a quick uh, snapshot of the town's finances. And the town's just clicking on all eight cylinders like it has every year that we've been here. You've gained a little bit every year. Um, even though you've used free cash uh, for articles and for, for a certain capital, um, and you passed on a savings uh, to the town residents in the form of a levy capacity, the unassigned fund balance still continues to grow. So okay. it's just uh, really managed well at that level. Um, the budget's managed well. There's always turnbacks. Uh, the revenues are coming in nicely. The delinquents that are all they're at all-time lows. Mm -hmm. So on the financial side, um, since 2009, the town has gone from 1.7 million in unassigned fund balance to 4.1 million. So almost, uh, it's about two and a half times it's grown. Uh, you established an OPEB trust, which is fully funded. In fact, you've got about $114,000 more uh, than 100% funded, which is the only town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, that bears that distinction. Uh, so you've got an a OPEB asset, not an OPEB liability. And, um, you should be congratulated on that because many towns are really in a challenge and are having a lot of difficulty even putting in a few dollars a year into the OPEB account. Um, 18 also marked uh, the end of the prior government, which was Board of Selectmen to Board of Selectmen Town Manager. And uh, we can talk about the Town Manager Act. I'm just, I segued it here in the overview, but we can jump into the Town Manager Act on the next page. So basically, I'll read the, um, I'll read the act uh, word for word, and then, we, then I can talk about it a little bit. But the town manager is appointed by the selectmen. Town manager is appointed by the selectmen to oversee the daily operations of the town, advise and, and administer the policies and procedures of the board of selectmen, and enforce town bylaws and actions passed by town meeting. Serving as both the chief administrative and chief financial officer, the town manager is responsible for the effective management of, the, of town departments, preparing an annual budget and capital, capital plan, coordinating activities leading up to the annual town meeting, providing support to the committee system, working with other levels of government, and managing special projects for the Board of Selectmen. 
The town manager is also responsible for the continual review of policies and programs in an effort to improve services. So this is new to the town. Um, the town has basically used you three folks and the people before you that sat in those same seats to manage the town with the help of a finance director. Uh, you folks really, really got into the detail. It was a, a great effort. You guys looked at just about everything. A warrant comes up. You guys looked at every single invoice. Questions always went back. They always, whenever I did the audits, they're like, yeah, we'll get a question on that. We'll get it. They knew that you guys would really look at it closely, uh, more so than any other place that I've audited. And um, it, it just echoes really well on that process. Well, at some point you decided, hey, we need a town manager. We're growing. We're doing different things. Um, the town is, uh, is, is very segregated. Let's see if we can bring some unity. Let's see if we can, and, you know, make it more efficient by bringing in a town manager, eliminating the finance director. So what I've seen in many other places that have done this, I've seen a lot of growing pains. All of a sudden, you guys that are micromanaging everything are told, you don't have to do that. We've got a town manager. So you don't have to go as far as you, are, you have been going. And that, it's very difficult to step back from that. Uh, it's very difficult to step back from other responsibilities that you folks have had that now belong with the town manager. So, so this is a, it's just an area that I think is going to take a little bit to, to smoothen out, to get to where it's working really well. I'm very confident that it will. Uh, I've met with the town manager on numerous occasions. He's a very dedicated, hardworking, very, very right wants to get an answer for everything, and that's that's what's great about uh, about Angus, and and I think he's going to be very successful in this town, if if given hopefully the opportunity to to work as a town manager. So what I've suggested here, which other towns have done, is to reach out to a company potentially a management company mm -hmm. that looks at organizations. And, say, and comes into West Newbury and says, what is the best way to set up the town based on the Town Manager Act we have in place? Uh, rather than asking me, uh, rather than asking opinions on the street, get a company in that's, that does this, does this for a living, makes these recommendations, and bring them in and, and look at the recommendations they make based on the way West Newbury is set up with all your various committees and commissions. Um, with the way the selectmen set up and the way the town manager has um, come into the process and read the report and then act, act accordingly. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think uh, I'd like to add something to that. Um, if that's okay. I think the other, other piece to what you just said is the relationship that the town manager has with uh, the other boards and committees outside of this board. I think that's a, also a very to add into that, um, yes, I would. I would have added that. Into it, but yeah, that's it, it, it is. It's for it's somebody important. that you mean for, when he makes a um, suggestion about having somebody look at it to make yes. sure they look well, at that, look at that well, also. I think, I think Tony talked about you know, us working together mm -hmm. with Angus. I would go take a step beyond that. It's Angus working together also with all of the other elected boards, yeah, committees. Yeah. No, I agree with that I think one. That's actually a yep. bigger opportunity. Yeah, I agree with Which that. Which is actually more real life. Yeah. yeah. My I mean, that's our day-to-day. -day. Yeah. We work with some everybody. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. No, good point, Joe. Yeah, excellent point, too. Uh, procurement. So, um, again, this is going into a different area now that you have a town manager. Typically, in, a, in communities that have town managers, the town manager is typically the chief procurement officer. Well... Mike uh, has held that hat for a number of years. He's, he's, he's held it well. He's held it proudly. He's done a nice job on the procurement side. Uh, at some point, um, it's, there's going to be a time when Mike says, I'm no longer the procurement officer because I'm either retiring, leaving, or whatever. And you don't want to be caught in a situation where you don't have a procurement officer. So one of the recommendations I've made here is that Kind of like Brooklyn is not having a town clerk moving forward. Yeah, exactly. So one of the recommendations I've had here is that the town manager begin to earn 
the MCPPO over the next 24 months. You can't just go in one day, get the test, and be done. It's a process to earn it. And that's why I say let, you should plan for that so that it's in place uh, when that time comes up and, uh, and, and Angus can step into that position um, you know, um, in a more uh, efficient way. Uh, I'd also like to see the town accountant um, take that course. And not the full course, but at least the course that gives the overview. It's the, the first 20 hour uh, course. You don't have to take all the, go all the way to become the chief, a chief procurement officer, official. But just to get more familiar with rules and regulations. Right, the town side. accountant to take it, not to take any chief procurement responsibilities. Right, just, just only, to take the course. Only to have knowledge of yeah. the law. I, I took the course about 12 or 13 years ago, and it was wonderful. It, it taught me a lot of things I didn't even know. And I had been doing this, I had been in this business for a while. I went in, I took the course, and it really is a good, refreshing course on what you can't and can't do. And the accountant is the last line of defense. So it, it really, um, to me, is important that, that you guys endorse her taking that course. And I've uh, talked to Laurie about it. She's up for it. If, you folks would endorse it, and I think it's a, a, a great idea. Makes sense. <clears throat> uh, OPEB. So hopefully, what's happened here is we have delays two straight years. So we come in to do the audit. Everyone's saying, hey, Tony, we're ready. Let's get come in. We want to get the audit done early this year. So we come in September, October. We get here. There's no OPEB. Uh, well, when did you send the information to the actuary? Well, we just sent it like last week, but they said they'd expedite it. Well, that's not how actuaries work. It takes a while for them to crunch through the numbers, produce a report. So basically, we had to put down the audit and then come back. This is the second year in a row it's happened. So again, strong reminder, if you haven't started the fiscal 19 OPEB process. Don't waste your time. It's too late. Yeah, if you haven't started <laughs> it yet. So I'm hoping you're going to tell me it started. OK. Yeah, so it started. Really, we need to start it so that when you call me in October and say, can we get on the track early? I'm going to say, is OPEB done? I'm not going anywhere near the town unless OPEB is done because uh, it's just been a, a horror show. And it, so is this, a, is this now annual? Not it's annual now, yeah, yeah, now yeah, 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 yeah. You do a full blown, like it's, there's more done in every other year, but there's something every year. Okay. There's something every year now. So what created the delay? Why didn't you have it? It wasn't, the information hadn't been turned over to the actuary timely. Um, By the town. Yeah, and it was frustrating because I made a reminder at the selectmen's meeting last year. I made several reminders during the year. And I think the issue was, you know, Mike had always handled it, Mike Bertino. Mm -hmm. Then Andy Gould took over. Mm -hmm. And then, then Andy left. And then Laurie wasn't sure who was responsible. The treasurer wasn't sure. It was like, it wasn't. Like, let's not do OPEP. It was more like, who takes the bull by the horns and does it? We've had a lot of turnover, which yeah, on a exactly. lot of these different things, it, so it's they could have been that. reconciled a lot e sooner and stuff if we didn't have yeah. the turnover that we did. It's caused that. And, and the thing is, when we got the OPEP, they were showing a $700,000 liability. I nearly fell down. I looked at it. I'm like, no, this town's the only town that has an asset, not a liability. Uh, when, I, when we researched it, we found that the actuary had used the 4% discount rate instead of 7 which you're entitled to because you've got it in a managed account mm -hmm. that's earning yep. interest at a higher level, not a savings account where they'd only give you the 4%. So, um, mm -hmm. so we were able to get, that caused further delays, but at least we got it right. And uh, you know, that should help when, when you get your next uh, uh, bond conference, bond rating conference. So. Just please tell me it's done when we call to schedule the audit. Uh, okay, yep. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's potentially because they use two different depends what the actuary, how the actuary said it. I'll take a look at that, though, but thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Hold on for one second. Excuse me. If you could write that question down so we can get that to lock, that would be great. Thank you. It may be OK that it's different. It is what it is, but, but I, I want to try to get through it without questions yep. and get moving on. But yep. 
but if we'll get that to him. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, cash reconciliations, bank reconciliations, those, are, those were good. And those have been a problem for the last couple of years, but those were good this year. So I just wanted to at least um, put something positive in here. So, um, <laughs> so I pulled out the one from last year. And, it, and the other thing that, that was, was really, really nice here, really nice, which tells me this town is thinking. Um, so the Federal Open Market Committee, which is the arm of the federal government that increases and lowers interest rates, mm -hmm. the FOMC, um, they had a lot of um, they had a lot of activity last year, so they were increasing interest rates a lot. The bad news is that debt rate is going to go up, but the good news is savings rates are going to go up. Mm -hmm. A lot of treasurers missed this; they missed this, and they were still in like one tenth, two tenths, four tenths, five tenth bank accounts, um, because the bank's not going to call you and say, "Hey." We want to give you more money. Hey, we're going to give you more money. We got a, we got a nice 2%. All you got to do is sign this off, and we'll move that money over, and we'll give you 2%. Um, when I brought this up to, to Angus, he showed me a sheet. He showed me every meeting that he had had with the banks, what the interest rate was, what the new interest, interest rate was. So very, very, he showed a very active process. So this town didn't miss the boat and didn't miss a nice chunk of interest there that a lot of towns miss, because I've been putting this in all the management letters that, hey, folks, you got to look at your bank accounts. you got to earn more interest. This town nailed it, and I was really, really happy to see that. So I wanted, again, wanted to just give you the thumbs up on that. Um, next area, payroll withholdings. So the, the, the thing about the withholdings is you've got, if you have federal income tax, which is a withholding, $20 comes out of Joe Smith's pay. That $20 gets sent to the IRS. Done. Easy. One for one. The account that's really been difficult to manage is the insurance account. So because I take $100 out of someone's, ins someone's pay for insurance, it doesn't mean exactly that $100 is going to go over because what you wait for is a bill. You wait for a bill from the insurance company. Sometimes rates change, and you forget to change the withholding amount. Uh, sometimes the, um, oh, and the, the employee has to match. The employer has to match the employee, so the town has to do a matching on that. Sometimes that matching changes. You've, you've had times when you've actually changed the percentage of contribution. Yep. What's happening? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. No, I heard you. Yeah. No, I know. No, nothing. No, go on. They're just talking in the audience. No, okay. go on. So um, we have, there's also situations where people have to pay into insurance because there's not enough coming out of their pay. Uh, typically retirees um, where they're on, still on a, on a town health plan. So they could fall behind. So what happens is this is a, an account that could be subject to a lot of errors. And every year for the last four years, I've indicated in the report that it's not being reconciled. We have unusual balances, we have deficits, we have surpluses. Um, there was one year where the money taken out of everyone's pay got put into revenue instead of withholdings. This was off like fifty or sixty thousand dollars. So there's a lot of errors that can happen in this account. And my, I really want to see the town reconcile this account every month. When the bill comes in, I want the town to say, okay, here's the bill from the insurance company. Here's what I have in this account. Here's what the town's going to match. Does it make sense? And I really want the town to go through that process. Um, How difficult was that? And How much more work? You were a small town. It's, you know what I mean? Once you've got it set up, if you try to go back a whole year, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be very difficult to do. Once you've got it set up after the first month, it should be pretty much clockwork. And I mean, there was a situation here where um, money was not turned over to the account from an individual. That's been resolved at this point. So that shouldn't be an issue anymore. 
There was also another situation where eight employees were overwithheld. Those employees didn't even know they were being overwithheld. Uh, it was to the tune of twelve thousand dollars. And had it had the account been getting reconciled, those items would have would have popped up, especially the overwithholding of them of the eight employees. But that's taken care of also. That's taken care it's of also. Take, they've been reimbursed. Yeah, they've been reimbursed. At this point, everything in this account, sh account should be taken care of. So now we need to start reconciling it. And I really don't want to come into another audit saying, have you reconciled the payroll withholdings? If the answer is no, I'm, I'm not going to be happy with that. So, okay. so that's something that really, just to, to keep on top of Lori, the treasurer, just make sure that's getting reconciled and you know what's going through that account. Good. Um, so transfers. Uh, there was a transfer approved from the Dunn revolving account to supplement debt. Um, it was never made to the books, so we, we caught that during the audit. Thankfully, the um, town accountant had not turned that over to the state yet, so the item was uh, corrected before the balance sheet got turned over to the state. So that's, it's resolved at this point, but we need to, uh, we need to track our transfers um, before we close the books. <coughs> Financial policies and procedures. So uh, the town is, let's see, so through the community compact grant, um, the town is, is well on its way to, to, to doing these um, policies and procedures. And the, reasons, the reason that these are good, when I first came into the town hall back in 13 or 14, I forget exactly when, and I asked for policies and procedures, they were kind of in like a loose leaf binder the town accountant gave me, well, we did this one in 2009, we did this one in mm -hmm. 2012. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of all over, the, you know, they weren't codified, they were kind of all over the place. What the rate, so you were following policies and procedures, we're not saying they didn't exist, they were just kind of a, a mismatch of things, and there were some things that could have been added and so forth. You needed to be a lot more comprehensive. You needed to be and, and codified, so to, to, uh, to be in a readable state. So the town, um, the town engaged the com it, oh the community. You got money from the community compact here, so you actually got a grant to go get these financial policies and procedures done. Mm -hmm. The reason this is good also is just for your bond rating. Right now you're one notch below a AAA. Can we ever get to a AAA because of the size and the revenue and stuff that we have? I mean, I, I know I saw a small town just do it. Topsfield, Topsfield just did it. They just got to AAA. They're not. They're not that you know how hard it is. I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's a lot of factors, and what keeps us behind is because of our... Well, you're part of Essex Retirement, which mm -hmm. Topsfield is. Okay. Topsfield just got their financial policies from exactly how you did them. Got them from the, um, the okay. what is it, the Collins Center, or, mm -hmm. or however you did it. The they compact. did the same exact thing. They got them, the DLS did them. Yeah, the the DLS. DLS did them, okay. So basically the same process, though. And... Um, Topfield doesn't have a lot of debt, like you folks. Uh, population's about 5,000. I don't know what the population is here. 4,500, 4, 4,600, 4,600. It's, it's close. Topfield is part of a regional school district. Mm -hmm. um, the income demographics are fairly close. Hmm. So I think when Topfield got the AAA, I said there is hope for communities in that size and in, that, in those demographics. Mm -hmm. um, this was missing last time you got your... Well, that just happened. Right. So yeah. this wasn't there last time you got your rating. <coughs> also, the OPEB wasn't done. So they had an OPEB from 2013. Which wasn't... Which wasn't the like, one you have now. Which wasn't funded like that. So, so there's a lot of things that are, that are better now that didn't exist two years ago when you got your, your ratings call. Uh, there were also some questions on how much you were going to have to pay in debt for the schools. Uh, some water projects. There were questions brought up. Is the town going to have a significant amount of debt or not? So I don't, I think you have better information now that may say you're not going to have as much debt as you initially thought. Well, so I think we had the information then. I don't think it was communicated well to the bond rating agency. I, I think you might be right. Sure thing. Yeah, I think you might be right because I think the bond rating agency came away from the call that you might have a lot of debt in the future. Which was not true. So, so that was. I don't think they. I don't think they anticipated a retiring debt also. And then, I mean, yeah, I and think then. They anticipated retiring. 
Yeah. There's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. So, we're, so we're on. Everything's different. Yeah. So I think. So it's positive. I think that the next time you get a bond rating call, if it's set up correctly, and I would love to be involved in it and help out and kind of choreograph it for you folks, mm -hmm. rather than getting called on Tuesday morning and say, hey, can you come by here this afternoon? We're having a bond ratings call. <laughs> that's really not the way to do it. And that, that's kind of what happened last time. I'd rather say, okay, let's plan for this. Let's do a PowerPoint presentation. Let's do all the bells and whistles. Let's make this look really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And we'll give them everything they want. We'll give them the financial policies and procedures. We'll give them the, OP, the newest OPEB. We'll give them everything they need. Mm -hmm. And only then will you have a shot at it. Good. It's different now. So it's, it's different, exactly. But positive. Move forward. We're not looking past. Right. Kelly, uh, before you go to the next page, can you go um, school resource officer? There was some confusion with our finance committee. I don't think anybody has been comes here tonight, but no. just so you can state about how that person gets paid publicly. Uh, yeah, just can you what your through? wishes are? How, how he how the money is spent? Where? Oh, so the school resource officer's entire salary is paid by the town. Mm -hmm. uh, only half the salary is budgeted. The other half you get reimbursed. You get reimbursed, but then you put it against a the expense account. So the whole salary goes to the expense the appropriation, but then the other half comes in and knocks that expense down, and you can't do that per MGL. That has to go in as revenue. What did the Finance Committee not understand about that? They, they just felt that because there was, I'm speaking for them, I'm not defending them, is what their, their argument was that, that because we're on the hook for the whole thing and there isn't a signed agreement with the district that they will pay exactly you know whatever it is thirty seven thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars that that there's no there's no guarantee that we're going to get that money so so that we uh we're on the hook for the whole thing and we don't want to be they they don't want to be on the whole thing hook for the whole thing unless there is a signed agreement well there should be a signed agreement i would agree with them with that but it's kind of <coughs> apples and oranges to what Tony just said. I, I'm not, I'm, don't argue with me. Is that I'm Angus? Really it's the me, it's the messenger. It's the messenger thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. No, yeah. Angus, is that what they said? Or I, I think that the finance committee recognizes that uh, the proposed adjustment that for the budget, which is on the town meeting coming up next week, uh, they recognize that's a accounting change without a financial impact. And and I think if they were truly <clears throat> recommending that on its merits, I think they would recommend it. They have chosen to not recommend it because they want to make a broader policy point, uh, which is they don't feel the amount that the town is reimbursed is adequate. And part of the context for that, which this board knows better than I do, is that that, <coughs> that position at the time the current year budget was adopted was at a lower rate right. than the current SRO. So it was roughly 50%. Now it's, it's less than that. The Finance Committee is also looking at uh, we should calculate the true cost, take into account benefits, all of that in terms of establishing a, uh, an appropriate cost share. So, you know, I've got <coughs> really from both FinCom and this board that will work toward a written agreement over the course of the next six to eight months. So, we'll have that the next budget cycle, making clear that at the end of the day, it's the board of selectmen that will be the signatory. I, I, I mean, I would totally agree with everything that you just said, but also. MGL is MGL, so yeah, that's the rub. The revenue has to be go up top. Well, I don't understand why they are not recognizing that. Well, it is what it is. I mean, <coughs> well, you want them to have. A, they're making a point rather than going along with, with the MGL. With the MGL. I think it's they're more what they want to do. Make us a, using it as a way to make us aware. Although it's going to confuse people because people are going to vote against it. So they're appropriating half still. Is that what you're saying? It was already done before this came out. Correct. Exactly. So what we proposed for next week is that the budget and current year budget to increase the budget and expense. Yeah, they're going to go uh, you know, receipts, uh, but it's, uh, we, we haven't budgeted revenues for the FY20. Uh, we have budgeted the expense budget properly. So the FY19 changes an accounting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, 
on financial impact, but I think that uh, Russia's right that they're making a broader point. Yeah, and I'm not going to get hung up on 19 because this was out after the budget was set. Um, but going forward, 20 forward, I, I, you need to do what you're asking. I, 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 I'd, I'd want to see it done. Okay. Uh, You were at, you were on you were on. Did I have my pages mixed up? You didn't go to escrow balances, fixed assets, chart right. of accounts. I I ha I'm on I was on the wrong page. You know I'm why? Sorry. Because you were using the use the back of it. I know. Which I, <laughs> I did double sided. It's Earth Day. Yeah. We're trying to. Like, I was wondering because you said I miss school resource often. I'm like, well, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, well, it, that's okay. Yeah. So yeah, let's we use, go through. We use the front and the back. So. All right. So let's stay on this page then. Escrow balances, um, the they're closer, but the amounts in the bank and the amounts on the GL don't agree. So um, I wanted to see the town accountant and treasurer just go through and research it. It's off a little under four thousand dollars at this point. It was uh, eight or nine thousand the year before. So it's gotten closer, but basically escrow is the amount of money you get from developers, from you know different individuals that have to make a deposit to do work mm -hmm. in town. That should be put in a bank account. That should always equal what the balance is on the GL. It, it just has to equal. But it seems we have more in the, in the bank. Than yeah, it, says, it could oh. be interest that's earning, which isn't your interest. It's their interest. So all I'm saying is here, go in and research it. Maybe it's interest. It's $4,000 uh, to us. Yeah. At least it's not less. Possibility to find these people and give them their money back or they have to in, in my experience I, I would money I don't usually do that, that that this is a matter of not closing projects down yes yeah there's they, they, dollars at the end of the project. They just, that's probably what happened yeah oh. And it's accumulated over a certain amount of years, and forty-seven dollars on every project turned out to be four thousand dollars somehow. Right, and what I'm, you being, can, I'm, I'm generalizing. Yeah, and what you can do with this, too, which is a, another good point that Archie made about this might be things that have closed out, things that are old. Uh, you could do an abandoned property situation with this, where you some of these businesses may it, it may be a developer that went out of business that just never came to claim the money. So you go through your list and try to figure out who's still around. Why haven't they, are they active? Are they not active? Is the project complete? Is it not complete? And if you come across a bunch that are stagnant, you can actually advertise those. And if nobody, if they don't claim them, you can take that into, in, in as income. So that's another way to clean up some of the old ones. It might be so many small amounts too that they didn't even feel like it was worth the effort if it's 20 bucks or 23. I don't even know what, I, I'm sorry, I don't even know what the yeah, process the, is. The guy, and I don't need to know because of yeah. time, but it the, just, it could The be. guy that built my house had to give my town 4,000 bucks for damage he was gonna do to the sidewalk because of his trucks and everything well, going on the sidewalk. Damage. Yeah. Potential damage. Mm -hmm. He ended up bringing his own equipment in to clean up all the sidewalks and everything, but then he never asked for the 4,000 bucks. He just was like, eh, let him keep it, it's a donation. Never, nice. I mean, this guy's doing 30 houses a year, so it was like, it was more like, I'm not going to go through the paperwork that I need to do, just yep. let the okay. town keep it. So, uh, so that's kind of an example of what happens in these situations. Fixed assets? Uh, fixed assets. So uh, the, the last time anyone really looked at these, you know, to make sure that the ones on the list are current, they haven't been traded in, was probably six or seven years ago. So it's time to just look at the list. Are these police vehicles still there, or did they get traded in at some point? If they're gone, you, you take them off. You know, you do an entry to take them off the list. So we've talked with Laurie about this. I think it's something she's been working on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, chart of accounts. Again, some progress here. We've had this in the uh, management letter for a number of years. Uh, going into July 1st of 19, you're you're off to a new software vendor. So you'll have a new chart of accounts. So this will be gone as a, as a management letter comment. Is it VEDA? VEDA, yep. OK, VEDA, VEDA is great for this town. Yeah. 
So some other things may fall behind too, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, this is important, though. This is it's critical. Yeah, this is critical. The the chart of accounts you have now is is doesn't make any sense at all. It's upside down. Yes. Yes, right. Right. So give Angus some breathing room so he can hit his <laughs> July 1st deadline. Payroll's not changing. It's still Hopper's. So that's not changing because that's critical when you go through these conversions. So, uh, and Hopper's should have a bridge into, um, into uh, VADAR. Transfers, I think you did. We so did transfers. We talked about financial policies and procedures. The last thing is not something I caught, it was just brought to my attention that there were some un unauthorized purchases uh, made at the end of both 16 and 17 uh, by the police department. So um, I don't want to talk too much about it because I understand there's an ongoing investigation, but uh, that is just, uh, and it, it was difficult to detect because there could have been some collusion, I don't know. So it's something uh, that we're looking into. And it doesn't look like it's a lot of dollars, so it's not like, a, nope. you know, I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, so at, at this point. Yeah, no, it's an investigation, so. It will be resolved. Okay. So I think that's all of them. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, the, the ELS recommended, they, they, uh, we had <coughs> set up the idea of supplementing our contributions to the, to the uh, Essex retirement. So we, they, as a retirement, couldn't take it, so we set up our own yep. uh, independent mm -hmm. additional account. So uh, first question is, A, does that reflect um, on the uh, percentage of, you know, our, 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 does that account lower our unfunded pension balance? That's first question. And second of all, are, is it, is, are we doing something overkill that maybe maybe we're putting money to, there that, <coughs> that you know other places aren't doing that? So are we going to be penalized for for being the, the outlier? The outlier. Yeah. Um, I, I, Wilmington's doing the same thing. They're they're part of Middlesex County. Mm -hmm. Wilmington has the third most amount of free cash in the entire state. How much did they have? Just off the twenty five mil, I think. Oh. So well, they're a lot bigger than we So are. they said, you know, they, they they wanted to leave Middlesex and start their own retirement system, and that, that just didn't make sense. So they created a stabilization account, and they're punching all kinds of money into the stabilization account. And it doesn't affect the unfunded liability calculation, but what it does is it provides you with a because what's going to happen in Essex is in order to hit their deadline of I what. Angus, do you know if it's 34 or 36? They keep on pushing it out, too. Yeah. If they, st when it's going to be fully funded, I think it's either 34 or 36. Because you're so over underfunded now, mm -hmm. to get fully funded in 15 years, it's yeah. either going to change or it's going to spike your assessment big time, the like, like seven or eight years from now. Yeah, it's, you're going to start seeing a major increase. So that what happened- be in the 20s. But the state keeps on pushing it out because I think they realize nobody's going to be able to meet that. I well, it, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the solo uh, retirement systems are going to make it. The, the they, regional ones are, are going to have a challenge. So, so the state may pass a bill and say, "Let's give them another ten years." But what I'm what I'm so we could use it for those spikes. Is what, you're saying. what I'm saying is, you have now have an account so that when it spikes, you can level fund your pension by grabbing from this. So you don't have. Yeah. From this other resource, same principle we're doing for the school funding. Yeah. Okay. So, we, yeah, that stabilization account that we. So, it, so you said. don't think it's a stupid idea? No, no, I love it. I love it. No, but I mean, I love it. That's the. That's. But then I thought later. Uh, I, sometimes you get penalized for doing this. Yeah, no, the <coughs> the DLS recommended it yeah, also. They they like it too. Mm -hmm. Without getting, no, I love it. Yeah. Without getting into too much on this, because I know we want to move on to about the contract stuff. Um, how does Essex County do matched up to all the other municipal ones with their returns? A little south of median. Yeah. yeah, yeah still? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're in the. I think they're in the 40s still yeah. on a funded basis. 
44, 47. Whereas, yeah. yeah, whereas I go to the, I go to even like the city of Malden, which is an inner city, you know, mm -hmm. community that's at 70, 72 percent funded because they're on their, they're on their own, and they don't, they don't have as much money as you folks, but they're, they're managing their own. Well, they don't have as much money, and they don't have, and, and we don't have as much liability. Yeah, yeah, Hawaii, yeah. try. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Um, Angus, do you want to leave the one on the, um, the um, appointment of the audit and review of proposed contract? Do you want to talk about that? Thank you. Duly noted. Angus, do you want to go on? We're not taking questions on this. I'm sorry, Lars. You want to start? We're, we want to move on. It's not an excuse. Angus, do you want to go on? Read, read the management lever very, 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 very carefully. Rick, you read it. You uh, read it. Polly, because you two are up for selectmen. I, I, I know Lark and Rick, you guys read it together. Read, read it, read it, read, read it. If you have any questions, any questions at all, give them, to the, give them to the town manager and he will answer every single question that you have. We promise. Can we, okay, then you bring them through him. Can you, can you uh, continue? Thank you. On you, Rick. Sure. Uh, I move to approve the uh, uh, annual <coughs> audit with uh, Rosalie Clark and Associates as outlined in the April 5th, 2019 letter, which covers the years June 30th, 2019, 2020, and 2021 at a rate of, I believe it's $20,000. Uh, if any discussion, did you want to say anything? No, I'm just say that um, I've been happy to be part of the growth here. Uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of improvements. You know, we've done a lot of tough love. We've had some some difficult management letters that we've gone through. Uh, your people have rallied around and fixed things. Um, there's been a lot of things that have happened in my tenure here, and uh, I'm glad to continue to be a a part of that, especially through the growth of the town manager uh, position, and I'm looking forward to that. So, so thank you. Okay, it's been moved, it's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, appointment of the police chief. <coughs> you want to start the discussion, Joe? Yeah. So, um, I want to start by saying, no, I excuse think, me. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Sorry about that, Joe. So I want to start by saying, I think we had three very strong candidates. Uh, I think all three of them could do the job. Uh, I think all three of them had, uh, you know, their own individual uh, strengths, if you will. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would have been comfortable with, with any of them. Uh, I will say that uh, I think that uh, Interim Chief Duran, during his interim tenure, has uh, stepped up. Uh, I was impressed on some of the changes that he's made, and I would also say I was impressed or, um, 
during his interview. Uh, he definitely exceeded my expectations. Not that I had low expectations, but I think he did a good job. Um, so I'm just talking myself. That's kind of that's you started. That's where I'm, that's where I'm heading. Archer, uh, I would totally re uh, agree with what you made uh, Kelly's comments. I would, I would, I would be happy with any of the three finalist candidates that that we uh, uh, interviewed. Every, every and again, everybody had different uh, different strengths, but um, I too uh, was impressed by how. With Jeff Grant. Correct. Second. Right. Can I say my piece? Yes. Right. So it's been a, it was a long process, one that I wish we didn't have to do um, so quickly, but circumstances um, led us down this path. And I think um, sometimes, um, I guess when people say the grass isn't greener, uh, in this case, uh, it is. Because I think the three candidates that we had, after probably 70 people, maybe 60 people that we started with were excellent. I would go with what Archie said, that all three of them could have handled the job and done the job. It was very important for me to, um, to look at all the credentials, understand them, but it was very important to me to make sure that this hire was for somebody, this is my own thing, and less um, for somebody internal and somebody who knew Wes Newberry and who um, could understand policing in the town of West Newberry and what it's all about. I think um, Mike and Jeff showed those qualities, um, but I feel that um, with, the, with the leadership, with s some of the programs and some of the trials and tribulations that Jeff has had to deal with, and I thank him for that, since he's been the interim chief, he has been thrust uh, into some situations that he probably didn't like, but he handled those with utmost um, professionalism and courtesy to us and the individuals that are involved. For that choice, um, I will also support Jeff as uh, in the fact of getting into uh, offering Jeff the chief of police job in West Newbury and into entering into negotiations with him. So it's been moved and it's been seconded. Do we have any other discussion? Yeah, I just want to make one comment on the uh, process because I think there was some questions, not from any of the candidates, but I think more from residents on the process. And we have a very defined process of how we evaluate resumes, how we do our interviews. They're, they're scored. It's not a willy-nilly thing. It's not just somebody's opinion. It's not a popularity contest. Um, and I'm, I just wanted to make that clear with everybody. That's all. Anything else? No. Angus, do you have anything to say? Uh, actually, I, I, uh, following on Joe's comment, I just wanted to uh, make clear it was the, we had 69 candidates. Uh, that number is moved around a bit, but that's the actual number. Uh, and uh, you know, all resumes were provided to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, each uh, prepared a short list. Uh, I interviewed eight uh, initial round candidates. Uh, those interviews were conducted one-on-one. -on -one. There were video recorded. Uh, the Selectmen were each provided video of all eight interviews. Uh, that allowed them to view all of the same information uh, without being meeting uh, the goal in that case was to not have the initial round of interviews in open session. So I think that was a very nice uh, approach. I think it worked well. And uh, and then it was the board that made the uh, recommendations on short list of the three finalists who came back. Uh, and uh, I, I thought, yeah, it was a long process with the re-advertising that took place in December, but I think it yielded a, a really terrific crop of candidates. And, and I think it was a good and that process was even longer because we, uh, out of respect to the finalists, did you say seven? Uh, eight. eight, I'm sorry. Eight, that we, uh, we could, as a selectman, could not sit in on those. The mass, uh, it's an open meeting law violation because the appointing authority cannot have a quorum in executive session. We would have had to do those finalists in open session. But with respect to them, generally those people have not told their other employers that they're applying for a job just in case they don't get it, so they don't get fired or whatever. So out of respect to them, Angus 
with questions that we kind of um, we all talked about. Angus conducted those interviews by camera, and then we looked at them individually and not consulted at all, and did a litmus test and came down to um, the three finalists. So that was actually even a longer process to kind of drag it out. That's new to the uh, Attorney General's Office with open meeting law by, uh, regulations. So without ado, I guess, I think we've beat Call this. Vote. Call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Angus, could you please give that? I was just going to give you. A, I was going to say that you, we're, you know we're trying to move it along tonight, okay. but um, but I would like you to give a speech. I'm not, <laughs> I was going to put you I, on I'm the not long-winded, but, but I, okay. I'd like to thank the board for their support. It'd be my pleasure and a privilege to serve as the police chief in West Newberry. I look forward to working with all the boards and the residents of town. And again, thank you very much for your support. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was well deserved. Okay, Board of Fire Engineers. Joe, you want to discuss that? You want to have anybody? Now, we have, okay. You want to start the discussion? Well, I think we should, if anybody wants to. Well, yeah, I'm going to, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so we, um, we've we gotten five applicants um, for the Board of Fire Engineers. Um, we presently have a board of three uh, under our, um, Bylaws, or I was going to say it goes back to like 1722 or something with these Board of Fire Engineers every time we say it. We can have from 3 to 11 under us, under this town's thing. Sorry, this whole thing is, um, okay. Does anybody have the names exactly? I, I mean, I know who they are, but I don't have them all in one thing. Yeah, I don't have them all in one place because some were emailed over to me. So we have, we have obviously Ben, we have Mark, we have Dave, and we have, I know your last name, but I don't know you first, James. Jason. Okay, thank you. And we have Mike Dwyer. Okay, is anybody, I think this was the f same five that came last year, so um, if anybody has anything they want to talk about, obviously come on up. Um, we're going to have a brief discussion about it a little bit. Um, if there's something that's on your chest that you feel that you can give to the town or give to the Board of Fire Engineers, please feel free to come on up. So you don't rush and stand one of these conversations and move this way. If you want to see people, yes or no, or you can ask. And it's not going, if you don't feel like it, it, it in no way is going to. It doesn't impact. We just yeah. want to give you that. Idea. Yeah. I'll just keep it brief. Yeah. Of course, sir. Um, yeah, but just because of the microphone for home. Yeah, I'll just keep it brief. I'd just like to. Could uh, you get it closer to you, sir? How's that? Perfect. Perfect. All right. I'll keep it brief. I would just like to thank you guys again for the opportunity. Um, second year running. Um, I am interested in the position because I feel like I have a lot to offer. Having been on other departments of similar size, I feel like I can offer diversity that seems to be lacking with the Board of Fire Engineers at the moment. Um, I feel that having been on those departments, I've seen towns of similar size and demographics and how they operate. Um, very intimately from a young age. So I've got a variety of experience that I feel I could add to the Board of Fire Engineers. I would also, I would love to see some uh, maybe requirements set forth on how you're making these selections. I'm just out of curiosity more than anything. Are you, was that a question or a statement? Yes, it's because uh, the, the curiosity. <laughs> well, well, when you said yeah, now that yeah. I asked too, but when you said curiosity, it kind of went up like a question. But I wasn't yeah, sure if it was a statement. I believe it is a question. I mean, I, I would like to see um, maybe you some like to transparency ask as to how you make these um, selections. Well, you can't get about as transparent as this. You're here. We're over here. You can't miss me. You can't miss, right. Uh, we're on TV. We're on YouTube. Um, it will be. Uh, on our website uh, soon, so this is basically it. Okay. You know, we I think we do our own. Well, I'm going to speak for myself. We do our own type of understanding of the department. Um, you know, I listen. Um, 
uh, you know, all year long, and um, I've been doing this for a while, and and um, this has been a pleasure um, in the last five with these two guys, uh, because it used to be very contentious, very, um, I didn't look forward to April, because by bylaw, we have to do it in April also. Um, because it was always like that. It seems to be um, working well in my mind, um, but I understand that it can always work better. I get nervous about... The fire yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything can work better. I mean, I can be a better person. I can be whomever. But you always want to try to do better in our position. I get nervous about, I'm going to be honest with you, about stagnation, that hopefully we just don't have the same all the time, all the time, and we get stagged in a little bit. That's my... Um, you know, just my own management type of things of trying to run the town as a selectman. I don't see that. I see um, under this present board um, um, of fire engineers, in my tenure as a selectman, we've gone from not have to have full-time, a talk about not have to have full-time fire engineer, excuse me, f um, firefighters during the day because we were nervous that we weren't going to have enough people on call, to now, to then saying we need people during the day to now back to we don't need people during the day, and I don't hear those anymore. You might think we do. Somebody else might think we do. But nobody is telling me, like they used to tell me, hey, under this Board of Fire Engineers, we just need, you know, we don't have the people that are showing up. Maybe it's cyclical because I, there's a ton through Dave's work down um, that I hear, because I do listen and I ask. Um, Dave's work down at the schools with the junior firefighters um, is phenomenal. Maybe we're just... You know, that's the pipeline. That's the minor leagues, so to speak, and we're bringing it in. So, so there is some process, and the best thing about it is I don't hear much about it. Nobody's calling my house. Nobody's showing up on Sundays like they do about other stuff in town, <laughs> complaining. So when you don't hear something, I try to stay away and let it run itself because that always seems to be a good thing. So that's kind of my... Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? No? You all right, Mark? You all right, Ben? Okay. Anything else? One, one thing I would actually like to say, for the people who don't, you know, are on the Board of Fire Engineers, do you ever think about reaching out to the other ones who want to be on it and try to give them a more of a capacity, almost to what the auditor said earlier about Mike being the uh, procurement officer? And you know, one day we're not going to come around that corner to get our dog license, to get our dog license, and Mike's smiling face isn't going to be there anymore. We're going to go, oh my God, what are we going to do now? So you know, you guys are on the younger side, but whatever. But you know, there are forced retirements and stuff, right? But you know what I mean? Do we try to mentor them in to be the photo? In any, I would actually like to see that. That's a good idea. You know, because obviously there's an interest. They don't come here because it might be a slow TV night, but these two aren't here because it's a slow TV night. They ha there's genuine interest of wanting to help the town. Okay. I think I've spoken enough. Okay. You want me to speak? Please. Okay. Um, as I gave my opinion with the uh, police chief, I think that the current board has done a very good job over the last number of years, and I realize you guys were both also here there. Um, under the uh, the thinking, if it's not broke, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. I would, I would keep the board as it is. Uh, I know Glenn described in the past we've gone up and down in terms of numbers. Three has seemed to work well, particularly these three. Uh, I would also agree with Glenn that I think that there needs to be some further development, as as you guys have been doing. Uh, but just to continue to do um, uh, as you move forward in time. So uh, with that, I would make a motion to appoint uh, Michael okay. Fryer, Benjamin L., and Dave Evans to the Board of Fire Engineers. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Um, Request uh, make a motion to grant the street opening permit for 12 Dole Place. Second. Uh, any discussion? As with the conditions. Yeah, with the conditions, yeah. 
as as the application reads. Okay. Uh, uh, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to um, grant a um, street opening permit for Tim Collins on 70 Ash Street. The first one. Oh. Well, there was a com there, there, there was a comma there. Okay, Seventy Ash Street. We don't even need to know the name. Generally, we don't have the name. I was surprised when the name was there. It's Seventy Ash Street with the conditions imposed. Yep. Second. We generally don't have the name because it's the street opening permits is about the address, not the individual. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, review of proposed municipal vulnerability permit, uh, PVM, grant application and sign off on application, cover letter and letter of support, Energy v Advisory Committee. I, I hope you've had a chance to look at the application and it's still in almost final but draft so if you have anything you want to change let us know uh the Can only you give us the abridged version again if you for anybody who wants to know maybe like a 30 second thing or why you're doing it and why you're applying for the sure uh and liz if you have anything you want to say Something or anything new <laughs> the the idea is that the state is offering grants for communities to look at the impact of climate change it lets you be prepared it lets you make more sound financial decisions in terms of what to invest in and how to go about doing that. And that's what we would like to do. Newburyport's done it. A number of communities near us have, so. Applying for this grant, will there be any, uh, any cost that bared by the town? We've gone through, I mean. The, the cost is the employees who will participate. There's a eight hours of workshops and uh, a, an interview for those who will participate. And we have a number of I think great people who are volunteers mm -hmm. on various committees and also town staff who are willing to do this. And if we're awarded the grant, there won't be any future cost. That, uh, oh, only that. Mm -hmm. I ask just because. Sometimes and, and when you apply for a grant to get a new police person, they'll pay it for three years as long as you keep that person then on for the next, you know, 30. <laughs> you know, so I just, it was a rhetorical question, but I just wanted to make it's sure. It's an that everybody, important question. Yeah, I and, want to make and, sure everybody understood. <laughs> And, and the whole idea is that the volunteers will take up as much as possible of the work to be done. Okay. Any more questions? This is the same one that's before us. That was pretty, thank you for that short abridged version. We've more about an extent. Angus had some questions about being, just having the manpower and all that to be able to do it. Um, but I think those are all taken care of. Do you have anything? Nope. You want somebody want to make the motion, please? Um, you want to do it, too? Second. Okay, we'll have that. Um, it's already been drafted. The letter, I saw it in the office. I'm not sure if it's here, but if it, if it is, we'll have that signed today, obviously. And so whatever you need to do with it, it will be done tonight. That's great. Okay. And All in favor? Aye. Aye. We, we will take it from there in terms of logistics of getting it out. Now. You want, would you rather, do you want us to sign it? Oh, I think it's only my or signature, isn't it? You can say, yeah. you can say one of the one of selectmen has to be on the, uh, ultimately on the, is that something you decided now or? You, you can decide it in the future. Okay. Just tell us when we need to. Right. Or ask, tell Angus, then he, we can get it on the agenda. Um, do, would you like to walk out with it tonight? Oh, so you don't have to come back? Sure. Is it still in the... Thank you. There are two, right? There are two letters. Just one, one, one. Could you grab... Excuse me. Just grab anything, everything that's on that desk, please, Archie, that needs to be signed. Thanks. One needs to be... Yeah. <laughs> Use my stamp. <laughs> Drinks for everybody. <laughs> there's a cover letter and then there's the selection letter of support. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the next thing on the uh, agenda is um, condition. We need Archie for the next item. 
Yeah, but a, a condition board review of recommendations, proposed budget, and articles, including finance committee booklet and draft town meeting warrants. I guess everybody's here for that, right? Other than that, yeah. Okay. So, do you want to, uh, just while we're waiting for our chief, do you want to make that happen? If I sign them. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, if, um, hold on. So I, I would just, I would amend the motion and say to authorize the chairperson to sign on behalf of the board. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would you mind getting copies, giving us copies of these, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your night. Thanks. It's raining out again. It looks like somebody came in with an umbrella. Okay. What do we want to do first, gentlemen? So it reads, continued board of select review and recommendations of the proposed budget. Boom. Let's start there. Archie, you want to talk about this? Um, I don't know if we're going to make any, any decisions, but uh, having discussed it further with the town manager, um, the budget as in the income booklet, is, is what it is now. but. At least um, I'm prepared to vote at town meeting to agree with the uh, town manager's uh, recommendations, uh, personnel and budget uh, proposals that we had we did, uh, agreed to at the last meeting, but I didn't have enough information then, further information. I'm prepared to change my vote on that on the floor of town meeting. Okay. Did you want to speak to it or just let it be? Well, I didn't have the conversation that Archie had with the town manager, so I'm not privy to what that discussion was. Um, I, you know, I just want to say in terms of process, talking about individual people's rate of pay, I think is this, this shouldn't have gone this way um, and certainly should not be a discussion on town meeting floor. I think the appropriation for the department or the line is appropriate, but to get into individuals, um, I just think that's wrong. Okay. Um, okay. So you want to make a motion? Or do you want to further about things? I'm going to um, go along with you, but and with the caveat about Joe, this I am um, I'm having some slack as as you saw the auditor we have. Because of the turnover, um, we still have some problems with, and this is not a problem, but and with the new town manager and then being thrust upon um, a new budget cycle and him wanting us to, him telling us that I got to get this going and us putting more and more responsibility on him and certain things that happened that were unforeseen um, that he had to take care of and we had to take care of. It, it didn't work exactly like we wanted to but it still worked well. Um, and so we would have liked some more information. But so now that I've gotten it over the past, I don't want this to happen again next year. I want it to go the way that. So you have additional information also? No, well, I talked to him like Archie talked to him. I went and saw him like I, I talked to him. Oh, I guess I'm not running for re-election. <laughs> well, if you did. Well, neither am I. But, <laughs> but you said that you, you've been, uh, over the last month, you've been taking things out of your head. But I, I mean, I, I, I want to, yeah, so I'm going to go with your recommendation. So if you want to revote that, so we don't have to revote it on town meeting floor, that's fine. Or somebody can put a hold on it still. But so just the assurances of everybody here that they have two selectmen that are going to be that uh, in favor of the FIDCOM's um, recommendations. Okay, you know what I mean? Well, then I'll keep fine. I, I would make a motion. All the personnel wage item items. That's it. That's all we're talking about. And so they would be in accordance with the uh, recommendations of the uh, finance committee. Second. Any discussion? I just want to say I think the process was good. 
Okay. I would. I don't know if it was flawed, but I think we could have done better. It, it, we, flawed. I, I flawed just, makes flawed makes the, it sound I, I wrong. I would use the word. Uh, what I said. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can't. Yeah, I can't get inside your head. Um, okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. No. Who won? Uh, okay, so that's continue board discussion review of the recommendation of the proposed budget. And we have any discussion on articles? The motions for the articles? No, I'm just saying in articles. And, yeah, but that's, I'm just going by. Uh, you put it all in just to make sure we didn't miss anything. So yeah. there doesn't, just because I said it, that doesn't mean there needs to be discussion about it. I'm just going by the line. I just wanted, I'm trying to make it as simplistic as possible. The first line says, continue board discussion, review and recommendations to propose budget. That's what we just did. And then it says, in articles. I don't think we have any discussion about that. And then including the uh, fin, uh, com, uh, booklet and draft town meeting motions. Now it's the town meeting motions. Okay, so Angus had said around um, draft motions um, last week. Um, and I've taken those out of, you know, they corresponded to the article. Um, mm -hmm. And he made some changes to it. Um, the only changes that I made to his uh, request, because he was able to put in the, um, the, the location of the, um, you know, in the FinCon booklet of where, especially the bylaw changes would be found. Um, the only changes I had to his was in Article 17, uh, which dealt with the $32,000 new 4x4 pickup, was that um, to add and to dispose of the current vehicle at the discretion of the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. Because it was my understanding that Article 17, that we're going to rid of the vehicle, but it's, it's to be determined what's going to happen on Article 16, which is the, the larger truck that Wayne wanted to uh, yep. maintain. Do you have all the sunset clauses in the motions also? Yes, all the sunset clauses are in the motion. So um, that, yeah, and, per, and then there was some other just cleanup stuff that uh, was there. And um, can you start um, for town meeting? Is it okay if we just start at one? Um, one, Joe's two, Archie's three. Or However you want to do it. One, I mean, two, th whatever right. ones that were obviously like the board of fire engineers one, the uh, mm -hmm. the police one. Uh, yeah, I set that I set that up, and, and so I could you know do yeah, it what like the water department do they it. do their own, the board of health does their own, but whatever the ones that we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so if you could just and then assign them to us sure right? is that okay uh, it's just like so we know when we get there we have this little cutout thing is that okay with you yeah fine so it's just okay. whatever we're going to do we just start with me one joe two three or i don't care i don't have to be one it, 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 i don't care i'm just trying to get us rotate it that's yeah fine. just rotate and whatever it, it is it is, is it okay? okay yep that's fine and um the zoning ones you have to read the whole thing no, what we because okay, I don't want those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no. But we'll, give you, we'll give you the bond ones. No. <laughs> I think the zoning would fall under the plan. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, do you want me to be funny again, Joe? Do you, want I didn't to, say. do you want me to reach out to some people like like for the school one to have a school committee me member read it or um, to have members of the boards that are, you know. To, well, this is for the. The number nine. Bond, number nine. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out. If they, uh, I think it would be courteous to ask them, but if they can't find, I mean, I would hope they would be there. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the other boards, um, yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll reach out to them. And if they don't want to, we'll take it over. I give most of them just to Bob, anyways. So. Perfect. Bob's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, that good. You feel comfortable with that, Angus? You any questions? I'm sorry. Just get. Just give it to. On all the other ones that make, mean something, okay. please. Have you? Have they? Anybody look at their ballots? Has anybody like bought in one room and 
I mean, could it be down? Could it, like if there was an is missing somewhere, or is it all about the intent? Do you know what I mean by that? And so if it's if that ballot question, if the meaning of it is, is, is. yeah. <laughs> so it, hopefully somebody's all checked all this out. We've asked a bunch of times, but it would be it is uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to make no action on the annual performance review of the town manager. We're going to take that up. Then we're going to have a meeting that starts at six o'clock. Um, that will be posted at the high school. We're going to take, yeah, just to take that up. Um, and if anything else, we always post a meeting anyway. But we're we'll, just not doing it tonight because it's not right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll get you the, it's obviously going to be posted so you know the room. I mean, you'll know, it's not going to be in the auditorium like we always do it over here. So there will, there will be a specific, yeah, we're, Something, Angus has worked that out, but obviously it will be on the agenda, so you'll know where it is. Okay, um, execute amendment to the town manager's employment contract. Do you want to speak to this? Do you want to speak to this? Archie, you want to do it? You want to speak to it, Mike? You want to speak to it, Angus? Perfect. I didn't want to put, it's your, you know, I didn't want to put you on the spot. Okay. Um, any questions? Any motions? You want to do it, Joe? You have it? Or you want Robert's Rules of Orders? I'm not supposed to be making motions. I want you to do it. I'd like to make uh, a motion to add an addendum to the town manager uh, employment contract. Um, Contract shall section it four B. The contract should be amended to provide 20 days of annual paid vacation leave. Fiscal year 2019 paid vacation leave as amended shall be used by December 31st, 2019. Second. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 So if you could get that amended copy to us so we could um, sign it. That's it. That's it. Sign it. Okay. And then obviously have a copy. He needs to sign it. Welcome. You're welcome. Uh, update, Angus. Let's get on the town manager updates, please. Yep, so Good night, uh, ladies. As uh, hopefully everyone's aware, the uh, Mass School Building Authority uh, took action uh, on. Yeah, give him this, too. We don't understand that. And at that time, they approved the final reimbursement number for the uh, proposed Pentucket Middle High School. Project is uh, 52.7 million, uh, which was really quite close to what had been built into the projections right along. I did include in the board's packet an update of the uh, school funding formula. I removed the draft and just assess the true numbers. It actually has a negligible impact on the numbers that we've been uh, reporting because it was, uh, you know, quite close to uh, the reimbursement that had been uh, projected in, in for the last two months or so. So. Um, it's not so much new information that people have been tracking other meetings, but since not everybody does, I wanted to put it on as an update just in case anybody had not heard that news. And uh, Glenn and I were both at the uh, uh, school building uh, committee meeting on April 11th when that was formally announced. And uh, that was a, a very good day for West Newbury. Uh, there were a total of, I believe, five projects in the state that received funding from the school building authority in this round. Uh, so we really are. No, which but 
In, it, it was actually um, enlightening. Where you, then you, you saw us up against the other ones that were awarded. And we got a, um, a very handsome percentage compared to the other schools. We really did. Um, because they used that ability to pay thing, and it, it's really... Um, and it, that was interesting, and seeing the, um, the cost of the other schools. We were in line with that, too. You know what I mean? It, I mean, other than the one for Lowell, which was like $300-something million or whatever. But, they, um, but it, it puts it all in perspective. And we're happy that we got a, we were on the higher end of the percentage uh, aspect of it than the other ones that were awarded, which were good, which was good, which is good. And then you want to talk about the tax impact? How has that changed now? Anything like that, I don't Joe? think. Are you ready? It hasn't changed. No, nothing's changed? It was the exact number before was 284. Is it still, did that change? Or? Uh, I mean, it's a range, kind of. So yeah, it's done. I'm personally more comfortable with the, three, with the 300. Yeah, right. I, I don't want to over convey the precision. I mean, this is based on a. Right. It's a. So right. I understand. That's fine. And that percentage it's actually. Also, Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Hold on. You need to use a microphone. If your knee's not good, we can bring it to you. Uh, uh, Rick. I can hobble up there and you crawl there. Um, so uh, most of the discussion is said an average, but I think you just said a median. Is it a median or the average? Uh, no, actually it's an average. It is. It's okay. an average. All right. That, that was, that was oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's fine. And that percentage actually could be higher if we hurt if we hit certain benchmarks, which we were told at that meeting also, that it could go up to two or three more percent if we hit these certain benchmarks. And now everybody's going to be asking me what those benchmarks are, and I don't have the answer for you. But it could go up more. Is it more the efficient? Um, still, yeah, we can still it can be increased. It can be increased a little bit. Remember. I, I do, but Oh, okay. But we got that higher, um, we were awarded a lot of stuff because of um, the maintenance plan that we had. I mean, the the, um, the, the codes and the, um, the energy efficiency of the building. So th there's all these little nooks and crannies they give us, and I think we hit all of them that we could. Anything else on that? Okay, next, which would be uh, the federal disaster. Uh, is this going to be good news or going to be uh, bad this, news? This is very good news. Uh, I met with Dean and Bill earlier today. And, uh, the this goes back to the storms in March of 2018, just so people understand. When, when everybody's power was out for four days. Yep, and I was on vacation, so I had power in Newfoundland. <laughs>
300, and we have signed, and this is an update on status as well, we have signed projects uh, that we're awaiting contract paperwork. So that the overall bottom line is that we either have uh, fully obligated or very probable that we will receive $141,763.49 in federal reimbursement of local costs uh, incurred as a result of uh, the uh, declared disaster event. And uh, as I said last time, I really, we, the town owes a tremendous uh, debt of gratitude to Leanne Dell. She's done uh, yeoman's work in uh, documenting all of this and all the paperwork. You know the other departments and stuff. And, and departments yeah, because there is a, yeah. She organizes yeah. it in her due diligence and her whip cracking, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And the six you're on the emergency management and you, whomever, they, they all, there is, you have to work at it. Okay. They don't give it away. And they did all, and you have to start right from the beginning, which they do. They have a great system in place with all the department heads, the police and the fire, and the emergency management, and she's on top of it. Clocking everything. Mm -hmm. Budgeted revenue, so that's that's going to be a pure. Uh, uh, plus you think it will be in this fiscal year or next fiscal year? I, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I didn't ask when we'll actually get the money. I think some will be this fiscal year. It's, it's fully obligated, so. And we've already we've already paid all the bills. Right. So they and they, the, these are this is the these are the reasons why your free cash goes up, and we think we're spending it. <laughs> you get reimbursements like this, and you think you're going to be at an amount, but this goes right into free cash, correct? It has to. There is no other place for it. Okay, next, please. And it, and it wasn't a problem. No. <laughs> uh, so there's been a fair amount that's happened in the last uh, several weeks. On the, the the next item on the agenda is uh, update on recent progress and anticipated timeline for future review of proposed conceptual alternative designs and preliminary cost estimates for replacement of the Middle Street Bridge. Uh, so. We've uh, been working actively with Newburyport uh, really since last summer uh, through the fall and winter. There was a lull of about two, two, two and a half months this winter when the designers were preparing the conceptual plans. Uh, we did receive our first draft of conceptual plans about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we uh, did some initial staff review and they did not meet some of the objectives we had set specifically with regard to uh, uh, sidewalks. So we sent them back to the drawing board. Uh, it's actually just earlier today. Um, actually, this, this, um, I got an updated design. So that will go back through staff review. We don't want to put something out public. Uh, it's all public. If anyone wants to see the drafts, let me know. It's all public documents. But in terms of having a public meeting to get public input, we want to make sure the designs are reflective of both uh, the town of West Newbury and, uh, and Newbury Court's design objectives. We don't want to put something out and say, yeah, we don't like that either. You know, we want to put something out once we've got a number of good options. So Design objectives, though, are, uh, when we're doing those, we have cost and yes. we're, we're thinking about cost, oh, right? Yeah. So they're not, they don't look like the Golden Gate Bridge just because we like the design of it. We, yeah. Hopefully, cost is driving the design rather than the other way around. Yeah, there's, there's a good range. Uh, we're looking to get the four to six options, all with a reasonable estimation of budget. Uh, all mm -hmm. And, and, and those costs that you're going to be giving us, they will be for the bridge and for our portion of it, because obviously there's the bridge, and then there's work on the Newbury Port side, and then work on the West Newbury side. Is that all going to be factored in, or is it going to, you know what I mean by that, or is it going to be? Mm -hmm. To get into the agreement on cost share, there's a, a you know, draft on the table, which is, you know, we've got to get a starting point, but that's got to be executed. Uh, so one of the key kind of decision points in the next, uh, uh, in terms of going forward, at the uh, next regular selection meeting on May 13th, uh, we would uh, present the plans to this board, 
uh, but that's not one of the, at least that's not envisioned as being one of the three public meetings that is within the scope of the engineer, because uh, those public meetings are really the whole evening is devoted to the project. So we can talk with the board about whether we want to uh, do that on May 13th or do that in the future, but, but because this contract is with Newberry Corp, we need to decide between us and Newberry Corp, do we want to uh, consolidate those meetings, have meetings with both communities together, or have separate meetings, keeping in mind that the budget only provides for three public meetings. So there's some process things that I'll be working with the board. The, the uh, budget, uh, you mean like the design budget? The design budget, okay. that's right. So, so that's a major decision point. So I corresponded with the mayor earlier today. We're looking to set up a meeting for later this week to, uh, to really talk through what is the best Maybe we could have one here, one new report, and one combined. That, that would the more combined, I think, the better, because I'd hate for them to have things and us have things, right. and then, yeah. then we come back to one. It's better just for everybody just to air the grievances all in the same thing. No, but I mean, even, even like, okay. They come that's to that's us, we point. go to we them. One, in, one here, one there. And then at Panera. One, the other one we stand on the old bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Down near the well field, something in the middle. Put a tent up or something. So some of the main decision points, aside from the process of, of where and how we uh, get public input on the bridge, is uh, sidewalks or not, bridge type. Roadway width, railing type, and the vehicular speed control of traffic safety. And uh, isn't that a lot of mass uh, DOT? Uh, don't don't they drive that? No, they don't. They're not they don't. They don't drive the width of that bridge or the capacity of that bridge. So if they're going to give us money, we will be able to restrict. Because when we did Roxville Bridge over, um, if we were, well, it was federal money, I think. Yeah, that was a shovel. Right? So federal money might be different. That had to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't have to bring a tractor trailer over it. But DOT does not have an approval process for this bridge. Uh, they won't approve it. Good. Good. It's a municipal road. Yeah. Good. No, but we had to have a tractor. That had to be rated for a tractor trailer. If we were going to take money for the Rock Silver Bridge, a tractor trailer had to be able to, the weight of it had to be go, go over it. If we were going to take money. Remember yeah. on that? That's why they did the stress test on the pilings and stuff. So okay, good. Time, uh, I got uh, support from the assessing office and putting together a list of uh, mailing labels uh, because we want to do more than just social media and website. We'd like to send people a letter once we have a big set for a public meeting because we know this is a you know high important issue to a lot of people. Uh, oh, what does that mean? Uh, send people a letter. So well, no, I'm sorry. Sending a butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I meant. Who are you sending it to? I, the letter is the what a. Can you put it in their tax bill? Depending on when it's going to be. Um, Have we done that before? Haven't we? I think we have in certain so states. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, I don't know. Who knows when this process is going to be? I'm just. Well, let's talk about it at town meeting for five minutes. The more you have, the best, the better it is at the end when they all when they all show up and say, "I'd never heard about this." Okay. Thank you. Then the next update on the bid process: uh, Break Hill Water Tank. Sorry, I, I would have taken this earlier. I thought you were here for the other stuff. No, I'm enjoying all of it. <laughs> you got to sleep here, right? No. So we've got uh, bid estimates tomorrow for both the uh, uh, high school injection building and the well, and uh, also for the water tank. Uh, both bid openings are tomorrow morning at uh, different times around the town line from 10 to uh, 11. Uh, we had uh, two bid conferences a couple weeks ago appointed by some interested vendors. And uh, 
Even more this time than last time? Well, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. There's only like two or two or three or something like that last time. The dialogue has been better. Yeah, we have got more. And I've already gotten in uh, today two bids uh, for the um, building for the tank. For the tank. Yeah. So, um, and I know another. I know a third bid's coming in tomorrow morning. So at least that. So Good. usually we don't get the bids until the day of um, the uh, Good. actual thing. But in this case, it's more than last time. Uh, we had two bids last time, so mm -hmm. we're going to already be ahead of the game. Good. Yeah. Same, same vendors? Or, or no, new vendors. Oh, that's even mm -hmm. better. Yeah. So, hmm. so give us the advantage coming in town meeting of knowing what the two bids cost, cost is. is. Yep. So that, that, you know, you understand there's some, uh, you know, there's some frustration or concern about, uh, you know, the fact that the cost has changed since the initial well, the, the They only have to guess. Uh, You're only guessing. Let's see how it works. Maybe this is the best way to do it all the time. Because you're basically guessing when you're trying. You're not guessing, but you, you know you're speculating. A lot of things change by the time you get that number and the time the thing goes out to bid. So maybe it, this is the better way to do it. I, I think it's you know it's going to be a in my opinion it's going to be a judgment call or a, a kind of a per uh, instance. In this case, I think this is a terrific approach. But part of why we felt, and I say we included the water commission and department, we felt that the Weren't kind of, we weren't too concerned about dissuading potential bidders who might say, wait a second, they have an appropriate fund. That's what that was going to be my time. question. In this case, where the voters have already appropriated substantial funds to both projects, okay. they're, they're, you know, obviously we won't know next Monday's vote until it happens, but we have a high degree of confidence that there's support for these projects. So that was part of why this approach made sense. If neither of these projects had been reviewed by voters, and we're looking for bids and looking for vendors to put in all this time to show potentials without a dollar appropriated, that would be a different situation. So I think it's a, you know, it's going to vary. I was going to ask you that, Mike. If anyone said, oh, I don't know, you guys have, don't even have the money, you're not going to waste my time. No one said that. No. no. Well, they, you probably have. They came in for pre-meetings. You kind of had good relationships, you know. They're not guessing on the price. They really know how to bid and where they're going to be. Do you meet up there or you, is it here in the building? It doesn't matter. But. Do you meet them up? When you meet for that pre thing, do you meet them here? Or? Yeah, okay. oh, but then move to the site. But then you went to the site, right? No. Oh, no. You didn't need to go to the site. Okay. I was just curious. It didn't matter. I was just curious. Okay. Thanks. Next. I'm sorry. Oh. No. That was an exciting third period yesterday. You're probably still. I'm, I'm so psyched you, for tomorrow. Yeah, you're still where you're still you're still you're still there. Okay. And you had the uh, the bids did were already accepted. The sub bid for the electrical, and uh, if I'm remembering correctly, the low bid is lower than it was the last time. The only string attached is that only if they, you know, it's, it's attached. To the but even the next bit is lower than. So, so I say that again. So, so, so it sounds like the two low bids of the three were both lower than the low bid the last time on the electrical. Huh. Know, stop it. No good. Okay. Oh, we don't have to get into it. It'll be, it's all speculation. It's not even closed yet. So it's. Yeah. I mean, unless you want to talk about it, but. No, I'm fine. I don't think there's a need. It. It all looks like it's going better than it did before. So that's the good thing. It's all trending better. So that's good. Okay, um, next update on the planning um, for Memorial Day Parade. Okay, this is just, uh, just an informational update. We're hard at work on this. Uh, Teresa Woodbury and uh, Councilman Aging has been very helpful. She uh, has some prior parade planning experience, so she and I are kind of the core group now working on that. And, uh, uh, you know, without getting into a whole lot of details, we're hard at work on it. We've met a number of times. We're, we're going through all of the... Um, uh, we're, we're going through everything. So uh, I will have some questions for the board at the May 13th meeting on policy. Uh, things like candy, no candy, insurance, food stamps, things. Oh, uh, please don't do that to us. <laughs> why, why, who's bringing that up? Well, there's, uh, well, you want to get into that. Uh, it, 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 
Can Archie hand out his flags? No. Watch. We can't. We can't. We can't be on. We can't be on the fire trucks anymore. We can't out, hand out candy. They're going to say something about I can't walk in the parade because I might have a heart attack or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it's getting to a point where we should. You know, hopefully it, we have a parade that. The muskets could cause it. Yeah, you could break your eardrum, the bass drum. Hopefully we get to a. We don't get to a point that people can still recognize it's the West Newbury Memorial Day Parade and it's not something different. That's what's scary. Okay, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever. I'm sorry, but it just. Who's bringing these things up? Insurance company. Okay. Of course they're going to say no. Okay. Follow-up meeting assignments or things on future agenda? Anything? No. Joe? Archie? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.